I recently made a video on a $100 fully upgradable laptop, the ThinkPad T430. At the time, I only upgraded the dual core CPU to a slightly better dual core and noticed that the internal GPU was holding the laptop back quite a bit in terms of gaming. So I made my first AliExpress purchase ever to turn this perfectly reasonable business laptop into a complete mess of gamer. So first off, let's just get the parts out of the way. The first thing I did is purchase a four core CPU instead of a dual core, since let's be honest, it's 2023 now, dual cores really aren't cutting it for gaming. So I got myself an i7-3630QM for $32.10 total. And since I have been informed by my girlfriend, I have too many GPUs and they cannot be taking up kitchen space anymore. I did not buy a new one. I went ahead with my GTX 1650 from the video where I upgraded the $100 gaming PC, and that was $117.00. 70 cents total. Then I had to get something to power it. A Dell 220 watt charger power plug thing, which came out to about $25. And the fun part, an express card to PCIe adapter we can actually use to hook our new GPU up into a giant mess of whatever the hell this is. That was $50. And I also forgot to get more RAM, so that sucks, but I mean, whatever. The very last thing we need is a PCI power plug that goes into another PCI power plug because that's just what I have lying around. You probably should find something more suitable for this. Either way, I'll link everything you need for this build below if you want to make one yourself for whatever reasons. It's time to put this bad boy together. First, we're going to have to take the T430 apart again to get the old CPU out and the new used one in. So real quickly, let's go through this again. So first, we're going to have to unscrew this back cover, take the keyboard screws out, and then go ahead and slide your keyboard forward and pull it out, making sure you just connect the wire for it before you go yanking at it in appropriate times again. Then there are two screws that were just under the keyboard holding the top cover on you and go ahead and unscrew those. From there, just say screw it and unscrew all of the screws that are under the laptop because I really don't know what they do and where they go and I don't have the patience for that right now. After that, you can carefully use a piece of plastic to slowly pop all the clips up from the sides holding the top cover onto the bottom cover, doing your best not to break any or crack the plastic. Once the top plate is off, take the screw off the left speaker here and move it out of the way a little bit. Then take the four screws out of the heatsink for the CPU. Once these are out, unplug the CPU fan and move the whole assembly out of the way so you can take the actual CPU out. Taking the CPU out is a little bit different from a desktop, but all you really need to do differently is just unscrew the little lock with a flathead screwdriver and then the CPU is ready to come out. From here, you can get your brand new used quad core CPU, clean it off if you have to, then match up the triangles and drop it right in. Remember though, this is a PGA CPU, so it has pins on it that are easily broken. So be a little bit more careful than you normally aren't because let's be honest, when no one is watching, we just drop these bitches in. Now you can lock the retention uh, lock thing in place and tell your audience you clean the thermal paste off from the heat sink off screen, knowing you'll have to take this apart in just a minute anyways, and that would be a complete waste of time. Now, like prom night, go ahead and put way too much thermal paste on your die and don't even attempt to clean it up. That CPU knew the risks. All you have to do now is put the heatsink back on. Remember to screw it back in the order that is listed on the actual CPU itself. It's really not that hard. Trying to apply even pressure across the whole thing as you screw it in. Now you just put the whole thing back together the way you found it. That was easy. Now, <laughs> now remember, if the whole laptop boots up first try and everything works perfectly, you must have missed a screw somewhere. And if you aren't missing a screw, something's broken. That's just the law of laptops, I'm sorry. Now just boot it up and head into the BIOS and we can see our new CPU is showing properly. Just make sure to enable hyper threading if it wasn't already enabled so we can get all those ooh eight threads. Then the adapter is as simple as popping out the little plastic insert for the express card slot and slotting in the proper side of the uh whatever the hell this thing is and then plopping the gpu on it then you just take the power connector from your weird adapter thing here and just plug it into your gpu and you're pretty much already ready to go in theory so let's go ahead and turn on the pc and there is no way i actually tested this out on an r9 280 and it booted instantly with no problems showed up in task manager gpu was fully enabled without me even touching any drivers however the gtx 1650 that was supposed to be used for this video did not it would sometimes boot but it would just give me an error for the gpu after trying a few nvidia drivers somehow the latest one worked weirdly and it did install and it gave me no errors in device manager, but when I hook up the GPU, it just gives me a blank screen on the monitor. It also doesn't register in task manager and GPU Z sees it, but is clearly just doing nothing and is really confused. Games also would not register this monstrosity. So unfortunately, 
back to the R9 280. For the R9 280, installing is the same exact process, and actually getting it booted up was as simple as just reinstalling it, booting up Windows, then getting some AMD drivers. The first ones I downloaded worked, and it showed up in Task Manager perfectly. After this, I hooked up my HDMI cable to my capture card and display port to my monitor, making sure to disable the laptop's built-in monitor, as that seemed to help a little bit for some reason. Honestly, before this, I really didn't think there was a wrong way to play video games, but now I think there is a wrong way to play video games. Two laptops, three screens, and and a graveyard of GPUs that don't work. Either way, with this, I was able to actually start playing games. So for the first thing we're gonna test is Cinebench R23 because I mean, we upgraded the CPU, why wouldn't we? For that, it managed a 2240, about 700 more than the previous dual core CPU, but really not that great at the end of the day. I believe my T14 gets almost 10,000 on its own. But either way, the T430 does not like the situation. Cinebench kept crashing, it didn't want to load, and then it didn't want to stay open after I actually finished the test and it wanted to crash immediately after I got my score. Blender BMW is a lost cause on old AMD cards, so we're just going to give up on it and go right into gaming. So first I'm going to start with before we upgraded it with the R9 280. Minecraft got somewhere in the 60 FPS range, dipping pretty often to 40 FPS at 720p. Metro Last Light benchmark got an average of 19 FPS at 720p low settings, and Beam and G Drive could barely crack 15 FPS lowest settings 720p. Portal 2 at 720p highest settings was in kind of the 80 to 100 FPS range shockingly though. And the fun part performance with our new R9 280. Starting out with Minecraft for some reason, again, I don't know, it's not a very good benchmark game. Either way, it was getting about 80 to 100 FPS at 1080p with the same settings as before. So not a crazy increase, but it is something, I guess. The Metro Last Light benchmark unfortunately got 20 FPS with the same settings, 1080p. So it's a little bit better because we're running at 1080p. Still not very good though. Beam and G struggled to even crack 10 FPS at 1080p, lowest settings. This one is a little bit worse frame rate wise, but with the higher resolution, I think it just ends up being the same. And Portal 2, highest settings 1080p, was in the mid hundreds as high as 200 FPS, so we actually saw a little bit of benefit there, surprisingly. Fallout New Vegas was able to hit ultra settings 1080p around 50 FPS, which before with the old dual core was hitting there about 40 to 50 FPS on medium settings 1080p. So that would be a pretty significant upgrade, I would think, for Fallout. Lastly, I did not test CSGO before the upgrade, but it was able to run low settings 1080p 50 to 60 FPS, which isn't really that great, but I'd argue you it's playable, especially if you drop your resolution down to 720p. Still really not great though. Overall, just from these games I tested, performance benefits were pretty minor, honestly, if anything at all. I was pretty disappointed across the board, and at the same time, not weirdly if that makes sense. There's one big thing I haven't mentioned about the little disaster we cooked up here, and that is we can only get PCIe Gen 2 speeds out of the Express Card slot, not PCIe Gen 3. So even if the CPU could keep up with the GPU, our GPU is just not able to get enough information due to the slow PCIe speeds it's working with. And in terms of thermals, the GPU obviously stayed cool since it had no reason not to, but when the CPU was being hit hard, it would nearly instantly hit 100 degrees Celsius and just be stuck there until the load was reduced. So honestly, if we had a better cooling situation, we might have gotten actually better performance from the CPU, but we just won't know unless I went and spent more money on this to upgrade not only the CPU, but the cooling solution. The R9 280 should be able to run Bioshock Infinite at 1080p ultra settings. CSGO and Metro Last Light should also be able to run at high settings, at least. But whether it's due to something I did or just the interface I'm using for this, it is not working right and I'm hardly getting an in-game performance boost in some games. I'm really not sure if it's something I did wrong here or if the setup just really doesn't add much performance, but go ahead and let me know in the comments. I may follow this up if I just mess something up somehow. I even tried to throw my Titan XPP on there to see if the power of the XPP could help, but I had a similar situation to the GTX 1650. Installed drivers but wouldn't show up in Task Manager or given output, except this time Windows Device Manager actually gave me some generic nothing error as well, so I guess that's something. And for one last thing, what if you want to edit videos? Well, Premiere still heavily relies on the CPU, and even with the slightly better quad-core CPU and an external GPU, Premiere is still pretty much unusable. It just really can't handle doing much of anything, sadly. Maybe it would handle a 1080p or 720p timeline better, but this 4K timeline just has no chance of getting anything done. So, I mean, at least the GPU kept itself cool, but I just really don't see this as being a great gaming setup. 
This is for sure a cool project and an interesting way to breathe a little bit more life into an old upgradable laptop. But with a cost of around $250, including the laptop, you might as well just build a gaming PC for that price.